Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be discussing The Summer We Fell by Elizabeth O'Rourke. The first few minutes, we're going to do a brief review of the story without any spoilers. Then we're going to shift into a deeper book discussion, which is going to include lots of spoilers. But don't worry, we're going to let you know before we do shift into that deeper book discussion. That's right. So before we jump in, you're going to give us a brief description of what The Summer We Fell is all about. So this is a dual timeline second chance forbidden love story about a young woman who returns to her hometown to help open a foster home while dealing with the past she walked away from. This story has surfing, mystery, and opportunities for forgiveness. Sarah, what did you think of the summer we fell? Amy, this was angst, angst, angst across the board for me. I, guys, (laughs) you know I struggle with these heroines who cannot accept good things for themselves. And from the very get-go, if you're like me, buckle up and hold on because it's gonna be constant throughout. Um, I really struggled with some of the characters they, with some choices they make, kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Um, but overall, I, I loved this story. I love Juliet and I love just how it kind of wraps up and yeah. So this author is one of my tried and true. I can always count on her for a compelling story. And obviously this Mm -hmm. one does not disappoint. I enjoy a dual timeline story. I really do. And I feel like it lends to a slow burn romance Mm -hmm. because you're getting just little snippets of the past as you go along through the story. I enjoyed the surfing aspects of this. And then the tension between the two main characters in both timelines is delightful. Full. So good. And I really feel like this would just make a really excellent beach read. Oh, this is a perfect beach read. So if you need something, pick this one up and take it with you for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get into our ratings. You've already mentioned the angst is high. So uh, tell us how, okay. much, how high. For me, it was a 3.5. Okay. Okay. So just there's guys, I just struggled throughout the whole thing. It's you want these characters to be together. You want Juliet to accept that she's worthy of good things in life to not feel like she owes people anything and she doesn't owe them her happiness regardless of what <laughs> people have done for you. Um, it was just, it was really high from beginning to the very bitter end, but it was so good. So I was higher than you. I gave it 4.25. Whoa. So I was quite a bit higher than you. I feel like forbidden love stories, and this is definitely a forbidden love story, um, really elevates angst yeah. in a story. Obviously, there's a higher measure of angst for that, and this one's no different. You do find yourself rooting for the two characters. There are a lot of obstacles, mm. a lot of obstacles that these two characters are just constantly having to overcome as you go and as a reader you're just really trying to um, work through that with them and of course having the slow burn in the past timeline really ups things for me yeah yeah (laughs) all right humor okay humor this was not one that I really laughed a lot throughout or well at all so (laughs) that's uh, true point Two, five. I gave it, it one, which yeah, is see, high. I feel that's high. It's really high. Because it was not it was not funny. So Elizabeth, if you ever watch this, just <laughs> maybe point out where we can chuckle because I wasn't finding it. Yeah, you know? I didn't chuckle. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely focused on the, the drama. It's and the angst. Angst. For sure the eggs. Yeah. Spiciness. Spiciness. This was a 3.75. Oh, okay. Was that high? I gave it three. Okay. Well, see, I felt like when they finally hit the spice, there was a lot of spice. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't super descriptive, but it was like, oh, it's a little spice, it's a little sprinkle, little spice. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was, was a slow burn leading up to that. And then I felt like there were enough scenes to bump it up uh-huh. for me and they were pretty descriptive. They're not the most descriptive that we've ever read. It's but. not about description all the time for me. A lot it's of time not... it's about the location. <laughs> about the location people you know what I'm saying <laughs> or the risk factor yeah the risk factor that, is and there's high. and the tension so. yeah for sure okay all right tears okay I did not actually cry but there is stuff that occurs throughout that the characters kind of endure so it was a 1.5 for me I did one so we were close okay. on that I feel like there are definitely heavier components to this and I would even be encouraged to say there are some probably some minor trigger warnings or trigger warnings attached to the story. So check those out if that affects you. Um, But I didn't cry at all. And I didn't even have the urge to cry. Yeah. I was sad. (laughs) Yeah. But that that was, you know. Same. All right. Overall. 
I gave it a four. I did 4.25. Really, yeah, this was a great read. It was so, we've always enjoyed Elizabeth O'Rourke's stories. Yes. And so this was just another one that we were adding to that collection of I enjoyment. I think so too. So. It's definitely a solid second chance romance for mm-hmm. sure. We would definitely yep. recommend this yep. one. All right. Well, that concludes a spoiler-free quick review of this story. Now we're going to shift into the deeper discussion. So if you haven't read this story... Go check it out. Come back and listen to that deeper discussion. You can find us on any available podcast platform by searching for Postbook Depression or just clicking the link below. And then once you've done that, you can find us on social. Tell us your thoughts all about this story. You can find us on Instagram at Postbook Depression Podcast, on Facebook in our Postbook Depression discussion group. And you can always email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com.